I'm Fran with Stampendous and I want to show you why we call this set Build a Lighthouse. You can use the elements in this set to create the lighthouses from around the world and even make up some of your own. And it has a lot of versatile options, so I'd love to show you how all of the pieces work together to build a lighthouse. There's the Kling Rubber Stamp Set, which includes a stencil, as you can see marked up here. And I'll show you how clever and helpful that is. Uh, to bring together all the different patterns. And then you also have the cutting dies for the major pieces in the set. And as you can see on the back, there's lots of other samples and you'll actually see how we created the backgrounds for some of those as well. Let's do a bit of stamping where I'll show you a couple of things with the Copic markers. So these are just going to cling on to the block, press it to make sure that it's secure, and then I'm going to use uh, Memento ink here since I'm going to do some Copic marker. And I'm working on our mixed media white paper, which works very well. So now um, I stamped with Memento ink so that I could use some of the Copic markers and I've pulled out some oranges and browns and some of the more muted greens. I thought it would be fun to show you how to do a fall um, color scene instead of the bright um, greens like this. And so let's also talk about, since this is a shape that we're going to die cut, I'd recommend that we just color over the lines so that the trimming, um, you don't have to worry even about matching it up that much. So this is my very random approach to my uh, color work here. in nature are going to be much more mixed and not so evenly blended and this method is very quick to get a lot of interesting different colors and when I go to die cut it it's going to be very forgiving even if I missed coloring some little edge so that's the best way to do your cutout pieces now for the lighthouse. I've stamped these because I'll be die cutting them and building layers on my card. And I've got this stencil and I lined it up on the pieces of the package. And the easiest one to make sure that you've turned the stencil the right way would be uh, the little house. And it's obvious which way the stencil fits to the house. So if you want to take a permanent marker, I would suggest that you write on your stencil which side is the top. And the lighthouse isn't exactly symmetrical. I hand drew it. So you want to make sure that the stencil lines up properly and everything works from this side once I've identified which way the house uh, turns. That's the easiest way. We've linked a lot of the little pieces onto the stencil and you want to take your little scissors and simply cut. There's several little tabs that hold it in place and keep you from losing both the inside mask piece as well as the surrounding uh, windows. So you have like the window and the window pane here. And writing on them just helps me keep from losing them until I've got some ink on them. So you probably won't be able to see this very well initially while it's this clean. But I'm going to try something here first with my Copic markers. So one little tip that I like to do 
is I'll take um, either a light blue or a light gray depending on my color scheme and I'll simply do a shadow to this side of my lighthouse. Okay, this was an N3 and I might have gone even um, lighter color, but just so that you can see that will help give some definition to things. Okay, next I'm going to take the stencil, place it down on top, and I've got this one that is the entire outside shape, but I've also got two other ones that are going to give me some striped patterning or the um, the whole um, striped pattern um, going at the angles and kind of curving around the lighthouse. So I've got it lined up and I'm going to tape it so that it doesn't move on me. I'm just using my marker right through the stencil. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. And if I want, I can kind of work my way around that window. Okay. If you didn't want to use your marker tip through the stencil, another option might be to pencil the pattern and then come back and work on it from there. But this actually worked quite nicely. And so I'm going to do a little bit more shading here. Okay, so that worked pretty good. And that's the idea of how the stencil would work. So in the same way, you've got another pattern here, which is going to give you the stripes. So now let's try this one. And I'll mention a couple of different things. Depending on whatever inks or medium you want to work with, if you wanted to work with some of the um, different colors of pigment ink, then working off of one of these uh, Splendor pads is an easy way to have a whole array of colors that you might need. And whether you wanted to use the little daubers, um, or whether you wanted to use the Dreamweaver stencil brushes, you're able to get into one compartment this way and just do one area. That's another way that would allow you to do some nice shading and you could work, uh, let's do a little bit more, whatever light source you may have, you might be darkening it on a different side. So anyway, there you see how easy it is to use the stencils to create all the different patterns on your lighthouses. Next I want to show you how I've created some backdrops to the cutout pieces that are in the set. And so I thought it would be helpful here to take a ruler and decide where I want my horizon line. So let's say we're going to go about there and that pencil line now will help me determine where to do some stamping of these other elements in the set. I've got little hills, I've got water, and I've even got a shoreline. Ok, 
okay, I might have uh, stamped the other water lines in some of the softer blue inks, but you can see how I turned it all different directions to get some interesting random effects. And now I wanted to highlight the fact that the stencil also has some interesting little water um, areas here. So let's start down here at this bottom edge. And let's give this a try. I've got a light blue ink pad to start with. In this case, I'm going to try my little daubers. Okay, you can see that's... Oh, let's see. There's a little bit more to the stencil. I might as well use the entire stretch of it. Okay, so now I'm going to want to keep moving this around and just watch that I don't go off the edges of my stencil onto the, the background. Maybe I do a little bit darker in the foreground and I begin to fade it away a little bit more as I get off into the distance. So very quickly you begin to get an interesting effect here. Let's do a little bit with a darker blue ink pad. And that just shows you how quickly you can begin to develop an entire scene. The light blue dauber itself can be added on top to very quickly get some soft lines. And if you wanted to protect your skyline up there, you could always take a straight edge of paper and cover that area. Let's see what color ink I had going here. Okay. Then I'll show you um, a couple of ones here that were a little bit more complete. On these, to create all of the interesting little puffy clouds, let me move some things around here. For that, I use the Picasso. This is a Dreamweaver stencil. You can see here we did a whole little idea page that you can download and the Picasso is the name of this unusual stencil shape and it works for so many interesting things. A favorite of which is using the top edge to create your clouds. So you can see the interesting little shapes up here at the top. That's what we used as a stencil to create all the little puffy clouds going this way. And I even turned it around as well on this one to do some more color uh, off the edge going down here at the bottom. So because it has all these other interesting openings to use in different ways, if I'm going to use it for clouds, I'm going to cover up the openings of the little circles and the little raindrops here that I don't need on this end of the stencil. Okay, so once that's covered, then I can show you here. So we're going to test and make sure we've got some light ink going. And then I'm just going to bounce off of the edge of that stencil and create a nice soft look. And you want to keep moving it around, even turning it at different angles 
so that you get a more uh, regular sort of look. But that's just that quick and easy to do clouds with Picasso. So now with the other pieces in the set that have dies, you can see how you can begin to play with all of these other elements and decide where it fits together the best in the way that maybe fits the lighthouse in your area. And some of the lighthouses are on rocky areas um, and you can have the lighthouse sitting behind uh, the rocks here or you might have the lighthouse more down on the beach area and the little house can be in front or in back of uh, the lighthouse. You could do several little houses and tuck them in behind. Maybe there's some more of the rocks here. And so the pieces are a way that gives you lots of options. And I'm even going to take this one here and show you if you want to hand cut it. Let's say you have a much shorter lighthouse. We've given you the full height, but maybe you want to use it. Let's see, I'll just tuck it in behind here at the moment. You can see how I can shorten it to get a completely different look. So we've tried to think of everything for you <laughs> and create a, a, a lot of versatility. On this panel, I used a long piece so that I could create a pop-up. And I did these pieces just stamped in the background. And again, if you needed to uh, create a mask of your own, you can use the, the die of the trees and create something that you could cover up to then do the sky or other things in behind. And then with the dies, using the, um, the a la carte pieces, I was able to position just one of the, uh, the dies to make this area pop up. And now you can see where I could position uh, my hills, my rocks, and uh, the lighthouse um, can all be secured onto that little panel. And the house could be placed wherever uh, you want as well to create a very three-dimensional pop-up card. So here you can see I've secured the pieces and trimmed on the edge uh, to get a nice little scene that really pops and looks like it's out on this edge of the water and more of the little clouds and, and all in the background. So that gets, gives you lots of fun ways to build a lighthouse that you like from your area of the world.